Right, so here we go. Round one is underway, and when we sat down with him on Thursday, he understood the grappling challenge he was up against, but he's not afraid to engage on the pass. It's a danger that is not worth risking. It is something that you don't want to play with. This grappler is that good. When this fight gets to the ground, you enter his world, especially when it looks like you hold the advantage. Also, the taller fighter lands a beat yet again. Might be a submission attempt here, Chad. I mean, you cannot sit in a full guard. When you sit in a full guard, you give these guys so many opportunities. Closed guard. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to... Right now, it looks like he may be trying to set up an arm triangle choke. He needs to secure the left arm, push it across, and secure it with his head. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Now he's okay. Now he can escape. Nice hammer fist. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you've got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop you it. you got to defend. But you can see him now start the game posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes. is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the fist. Lands a strike now from the bottom. Nice work there by Volkanovski. This is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head like through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, you gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Continues to attack here. We'll see if he can set up the arm ball. Gotta be careful, arm ball. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. Now he falls back into the finishing position. Really remarkable to watch. All right, right into side control. Upper body strength figures to be put to good use here. Yes, absolutely. And you got to look for his opponent to turn back into him. He should chase guillotine, but the opponent turns to the opposite side. He can take his back, throw his hooks in, try to choke, or flatten him out and just go for the finish. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah. No oh, pity pat to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. There it is. So with that, our next round is underway. It looked like maybe we wouldn't get here. There was a close attempt on a submission in the previous round, but the fighter was to fight another round. It was very, very close. If it's me and I'm his coach, I'm telling him, get right in. And with authority, goes to the judo throw right into side control. He's in side control. He's got a ton of options. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. Well, you know he's comfortable fighting off of his back. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pad. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Ground and pound strike is true. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by Volkanovski. Might be able to hook onto an arm here. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. Oh, we're getting a finish here. This might just be a matter of time. Somehow stays 
in the fight. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestle stand-up, get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than a half guard in the side control. All you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use yours. Working out of the half guard here. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. One minute to go. I mean, how many can he take? Trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. He's gonna tag off here. You gotta recognize that when a guy starts to put his feet on your hips, you gotta move him off and you gotta cover. You can't be off to an angle. And this might just be a matter of time. Full guard now, DC. For the top fighter, you gotta be very careful because most submissions come from the full guard. So advance to half. Try to build posture. But if you're the bottom person, the moment your opponent tries to move to the next position, build a shield. Kick off the hips and get back to your feet. All right, now we check out some of the action from that previous round, DC. How about the display of striking? Just high level. I mean, you would think that we're watching a K1 level kickboxing match opposed to being in the UFC. Both displayed great technical skills. Unbelievable strike. You ready to fight? Ready. Good. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. He loaded up with that right hand, too. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. Ooh, that uppercut landed for him. Oh, straight right. Oh, he was hurt. So it's a Go get him. Oh, big left hook there. Inside leg kick, that'll count. Checks ready. I mean, this fight is about done. He got him hurt very bad with his head kick. Now he has to find one more strike to end the night. Nice defense on the single leg takedown. You can tell he's worked on that. I mean, this guy is really focused on those punches to the head inside of the clinch. Another beautiful takedown. There you go. There you go. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very oh, nice. Man, look at that. Pick the turn perfect. Got to the leg, got to the position, got another beautiful takeout. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. All right, has the guard closed here. Now the guy's got on bar. He's attacking it on him. Control. Now let's see what he does, right? Sometimes when you do that, the choke or the yes. submission can get tighter, but he was able to evade it there. Yes. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Useful strike there. The ground and pound on point tonight. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. All right, he's in a half guard position here, DC, and in a good spot to dole out a lot of damage, I would think. A lot of damage can be done from the half guard. You sit back on that leg, you press down into your opponent, you drop elbows, you drop punches. What is very key is you controlling the underhook on the far side. If you give up that underhook, your opponent can use the half guard 
to build up to an elbow, sweep, or just chase down a single leg. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Well, any Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. Well, he had a lot more than a puncher's chance coming in. Big knockdown for him in the previous round. DC, talk us through the highlight. He got in his opponent's face, landed that big punch that put his opponent flat on his back. He couldn't get the finish, but if he lands one more time just like that, he will get the victory. All right, here we go. Fourth round of a possible five. And this is the time where fighters are really tested, right? Dig deep, lean on the heart. We'll see who has the upper. You feel pretty good in round number five. Round number four is the one that really does test the fighter. It really does test the metal of the guy inside of the eye. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Oh! That one was thrown to end the fight. Yep. <laughs> Man, he has a great double leg. My goodness, he has a great double leg. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Mutombo style, Block. he gets denied. Block! Great job, Block. Working on a guillotine. Ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on them. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for Bob. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was bad, but now it's not so bad. What a fantastic sweep. Under a minute to go. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Man, the submission attempts keep on coming. Going for a choke now. Tremendous striking action in that last round, DC. I know you don't have a Telestrator, but take us through the replay. I mean, I would love to have my Telestrator right now. That was a great display of high-level mixed martial arts striking. Both combatants stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and let it all hang out. So here it is, folks. Fifth and final round. Look at the good action. DC, he is officially got a big, massive hook that really has put his opponent on skates. Oh, big left. Nice double leg takedown attempt there, and you gotta think that's something that's gonna give him confidence moving forward in this fight. A lot of confidence when it happens 
was at easily. He took a shot, he got a takedown. What now will stop him from doing it over and over again? Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> well, he's in a compromising spot here, DC. You gotta figure out a way to get back to your feet. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Oh, he's wearing it now, bleeding from his cheek. speed on that reversal there. I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. All right, working inside the now open guard of his opponent. Uh-oh. Throwing up a triangle. He's going to start trying to move to a submission here. It looks like he's trying to attack the arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Out. He jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Nicely done. Right now, it looks like he made. He tried to set up an arm triangle choke. He needs to secure the left arm, push it across, and secure it with his head. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Then he's out. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, that's very important. Well, you got him right to the target. Let's see if his opponent can survive. I cannot believe he is still standing after taking that punch. Oh! Now goes in and secures the takedown. If I'm gonna do this to anybody, it's Anik. All right, so there's the final horn, and what a performance by underdog challenger tonight. He had it all going on the feet, and in all likelihood, we've got a new champion atop this division. If you're gonna take a belt from a UFC champion, your game has to be on point. This young man came prepared mentally, he came prepared physically, and it feels like he used his striking to get the job done. Official decision is in, it resides with Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 48 47. Playing the winner by unanimous decision. And new UFC lightweight champion of the So there he is, the newly minted UFC lightweight champion of the world. It's the word, it's, it's all every pro fighter wants to hear, and, and he gets to hear those special words. So. Every fighter hopes they get that one moment to hear and do. And then they want to hear and still, but before anything,